Hey guys, Ken Boy with the Accounting Accidentally website where you'll find over 300 blog posts and if you scroll down to the middle of the page you'll find links to over 400 accounting videos and you can also find me on my Patreon page where you can find subscription only content. So what I'd like to talk about today and I'm going to view this as a slideshow. Supply chain obstacles led to last month's cut to Pfizer's COVID vaccine rollout target. The subtext is the important thing here. The pharma, pharma giant found raw materials in early production didn't meet its standards. If we go to the article, it says, when Pfizer said last month they'd expected to ship half of the COVID-19 vaccines that originally planned for the year to the decision highlighted challenges for drug makers in rapidly building supply chains. And the problem was, in the second paragraph, scaling up the raw material supply chain to look, took longer than expected. This is a huge issue when it comes to the vaccine. And it, and it takes us right into the flow of manufacturing costs. There's three components to it. One of them is raw materials. So Pfizer is trying to find enough raw materials to make a vaccine that meets its quality standards. Those costs get directly traced to production. Labor costs, which can be directly assigned to production, the cost of assembling the drugs, running them through machinery, et cetera, or labor costs, and those are directly traced. And finally, overhead or indirect costs, which by definition are allocated to production. So what I'm gonna do is flip to a chart that I've used for years to explain the flow of manufacturing costs in T accounts. So what you see on the left-hand side is direct labor, a control account where all of our direct labor is getting posted as we spend money on it. Material control as we use buy materials, we put them in this control account. And then we have manufacturing control here at the bottom. And the point is, is that Costs are going to be transferred in to work in process. So you can see direct labor costs, 141, 250 when they are used. We credit to reduce the control account. We debit to reduce work in process, to increase work in process, 141, 250. Same thing in materials. We move 38, 750 that we used in production. That goes into a debit to increase work in process. Then when we apply overhead, that goes into work in process as a debit. So that's the flow from the control accounts to work in process. Eventually goods are finished and they go into fi to finished goods here in blue. Finished goods gets increased when we move in the cost from work in process. And finally, finished goods, when they're completed and ready for sale, we credit the account to move them out and they become cost of sales in red. So the flow again is from these control accounts into work in process. We move them out of work in process and into finished goods. We finally move them out of finished goods and into cost of sales. And I've always found that this is the best way to teach the flow of manufacturing costs. So that's the summary that I wanted to get across today. Remember that you can go to my Patreon page, The Counting Accidentally, and if you slide down, you'll see a membership level where you can get subscriber-only video each week and also blog posts, and you can read more about it on my Patreon page. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.